Hello everyone again. Um, I'm feeling a little weird because I got my curly hair going today, but this is Thanksgiving week and I wanted to make sure to touch base with everyone and send out some new stuff to learn in case you had a little bit of extra time over this holiday. Um, today we are going to be talking about trapping. And when I when I use the word trapping, I am referring to trapping artwork for um, specifically silk screening. Um, what my first job in the graphic design world was a production artist for a promotional product company. And out of our 10,000 promotional items that we printed logos on, I would say half of those items were silkscreen printed. So anywhere from big t-shirts down to um, little tiny plastic, like, I don't even know what they were called. Those little plastic things that hang around your neck and hold um, valuable things, like the little waterproof. Ugh, I can't think of the name. Anyway, we silk screened down to, you know, an inch by an inch imprint area. So I got to learn pretty quickly how to trap multicolor artwork for printing because if I didn't do it correctly, I had the silk screener themselves at my desk um, yelling for a new artwork file. So I am hoping that this next tutorial gives you at least a general idea if you're clueless um, if, if you, if you're anywhere experienced in trapping, um, it's probably not going to help you a whole lot because it's, it's the basics, but I hope this gives you a general idea and understanding of trapping for silkscreen. So let's get to it. Okay. Let's start talking about trapping. So Let's say that this design that you see right here, as blah and boring as it is, um, I feel like it's the best to start with the basics as far as getting to understand a certain topic. So um, let's just say that I had designed this artwork and I was going to send it to a screen printer to be printed on a t-shirt. So if if I sent this design just like it is, without applying any trap to it, um, I'm just gonna tell you that the silk screener will probably curse you in their sleep at night because when they when they separate these two colors, the the process blue and the black, onto two separate silk screens, and they lay the colors down separately on the t-shirts they are going to have to align the blue and the black perfectly. So um, let's just say, let's see, I am going to use the Pathfinder and I'm going to knock out this text. So we have our black. Um, let's do this. So we have our black and our blue and if I move this black color it should knock out or show white underneath, which is normal. And okay, so uh, this is so hard to explain and it took me years to understand this, but bear with me. So the printer has two options. They could print this entire blue circle solid um, on the t-shirt and then put the black layer, print the black layer on top without, um, you know, having white behind the letters. However, if you, um, printing black on top of blue, this light color blue is somewhat safe, but what if this background color was, let's see, well, let's not worry so much about the background color, but what if this text color 
was a lighter blue. Let's pretend, uh, let's pick a Pantone color because silk screening requires Pantone colors. Let's say that instead of black, because let's, let's face it, black is dark and just like think of it when you're painting a room. Black paint is going to cover any other color. I mean black is solid, black is dark. But let's say that this um, text was actually yellow. So if you think of it as if you're painting a room in your house, if you if your walls were this blue, light blue color, and then you were trying to go over them with yellow, think about how many coats of paint that would take. This is exactly how you have to think of silk screen printing. Because if you lay down the solid blue oval, and then you try to print this yellow text over it, you're going to come up with some sort of, let's just put a transparency on this because that's pretty much what it is. You're going to come up with some sort of like greenish, yellowish, um, gross color because your yellow is mixing with the blue. So as designers, as um, silkscreen designers, as pad print designers, um, what else does this apply to? Any any type of silk screening. What we need to do is apply trap to our designs so that we're not printing colors over colors. Um, so I have this blue oval and I have yellow text. So what I want to do is select the yellow text and we want to, we're going to add the same color yellow stroke and the size of the stroke will depend on what the item is that is being silk screen. If it's a t-shirt, I would definitely go one or two um, point stroke, probably two. I mean, you can go pretty big on a t-shirt because it's a large item with a large imprint area. But in my past, um, days of promotional products, we silk screened on items as small as, you know, an inch by an inch. And in that case, your stroke is going to be, have to be smaller. So like a 0.5 stroke, if you're going on a really small surface. But for this tutorial, let's work with a one point stroke. So, which is the default. So what this is going to do, um, well, first we have to we have to apply our stroke, and then if we go to um, attributes, yes, our attributes, which I have over in my shortcut panel. Otherwise, you can go to window, and attributes is right at the top, and we want to tell our stroke, we want to tell it to overprint. And what that's going to do is it's going to split our stroke width in half so that it gives our silk screen printer a little bit of leeway as far as lining up um, the yellow text and the blue box or the blue oval. And to get a real sense of this, we're going to go up to, and this is what's great about Illustrator and why Illustrator is the bomb when it comes to designing artwork for promotional products. Um, we are going to go to view and we're going to do over print preview. So now in over print preview, you can see, <coughs> excuse me, we have this set up so that the yellow, when we print this as separations, meaning our yellow ink, which is the text and our blue ink, which is the oval, it's going to knock out the text behind meaning um, it's going to knock out the blue so that it leaves just a clear space so our yellow prints nice and bright. It's not printing over the top of the blue. But we have this stroke that's over printing and you can see this third tone here. It's kind of green which is where the yellow ink is going to overlap the blue ink and silk screen printers love overprint and stroke trapping 
because it gives them a little leeway. I mean, obviously, it is hard, more than hard, to align these two colors perfectly every single time that a screen is printed. So this little bit of stroke gives them leeway in their, um, in their, when they line up the screens so that if they don't get it absolutely perfect, there's not a gap of blank space in there. So let me just, now that you can see the preview, and you know, if this was a t-shirt, I'm almost going to say that I would still up the stroke just a little bit because that's still not a very big um, gap or a very big leeway for a screen printer. So I'm going to bump it up to two and then I'm going to show you how this translates to what the screen printer actually sees. So we're going to do file, print, and I don't know if you know or not, but you can actually print separations in Illustrator so you can kind of preview what the screen printer is going to see when he gets his screens. So we're going to go to output and we are going to go to, wait, let's see, general, that's right, marks and bleeds, it's fine, output. Okay, so my, obviously my Canon inkjet printer doesn't print separations, so I have to change this. Let's do Adobe PDF. There, if I choose the Adobe PDF instead of my stupid little in inkjet printer, it gives me the output option of, instead of composite, we're gonna print separations. And then down here is where you can see what the colors are that are in your document. So I don't want to print process black, so we're going to turn that one off. I want to print the two Pantone colors that I have set up, which is Pantone 395 and the process blue. So if we hit print, it's going to give us a PDF um, of the two separations so that we can preview and make sure that our trapping has um, worked. I'm just going to save that to my desktop. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And, and honestly, do not feel bad if this is a complete foreign language to you because it took me at least two years to fully grasp this theory. And two colors is just basic. I remember at, at one point in my first job, I was trapping three and four color spot artwork. And when you get to that advanced of a level, then you have to start taking into consideration which um, colors the printer actually lays down first. And usually they lay down the lightest color first. So if you have Let's say you have red, um, red, orange, yellow, green. They're going to lay the yellow color down first. And then I would say orange is probably next. Um, and then red and green, they're kind of um, up for a toss. Could be either one, depending on the artwork. So it is. it takes a long time to get um, confident in trapping correctly. But hopefully this will give you at least, you know, the basic knowledge of what and why we have to trap artwork. So it, you can see my little icon down here is spinning. It means it's working on it. Hopefully it pops up here pretty soon so you can see the two color separations. Um, we should have, oh, there it is. We should have a yellow file and then a blue oval file. Yep, okay, so here's the yellow text. And my guess, being that it's the lighter of the two colors, the silkscreen printer is going to lay down or print this screen color first. So they have this down there. We have a little extra leeway. We have made the letters just a little bit thicker so that when we get to page or the second screen, 
All right, come on, computer. Scrolling down here. So then they're going to take the second screen, which is the blue, and they're going to print that, lay the ink down over top the yellow. And we can see, oh, if we zoom in, of course my computer is being slow because I'm recording a video, but we, we gave that little bit of overlap, um, two strokes or two points of a stroke in this particular case so that, um, you know, if the t-shirt shifts just a little bit or the screen itself shifts a little bit, it's not going to leave an, um, you know, a gap without any ink. So that is the main goal um, in silk screening and why we trap artwork. So please, I know this is confusing and I want you to be able to grasp it. So if I have forgotten anything, for those of you who know more than I do, please leave a comment down below and, you know, help me inform my viewers of what I'm missing. Um, two, if this is, if this made no sense to you at all, let me know and I will point you um, to maybe some more in-depth tutorials. And last of all, um, I just hope that you are enjoying my tutorials and having fun learning and creating new things in Illustrator. So until next week, be creative and have a great week.